And today we're going to focus on the third down percentage from the defense. Um, I focused on the offensive side yesterday, and while doing the offense, I wanted to take a look at the defense too. And, you know, winning third downs is universal on offense and defense. Win third downs, you win the game, which that's why I titled that. We won third down offensively. Defensively, we won it too. We held them to three for 11 on third downs. When you you when you go 60% on offense and you hold them to three of 11 on on defense, that's under 30%. You normally normally that's a formula for winning the game. So let's look at how we did on all 11 of the third down situations the defense faced Monday night in the dome. If this is your first time here, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you like what you see at the end of the video, subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified when I drop these random videos. But let's get started. Alright, let's get started. Now, while loading these, they loaded out of order, so to speak, out of sequential order. So that's why you're going to get a timestamp for each uh, play in the upper left-hand corner like you see on there. Like it's third and, third and six in this one. They're on the negative 41 uh, with five minutes, 11 seconds left in the third quarter. And they're they out of order, so that's why you're getting the timestamps. And just we're going to make sure we acknowledge that before we know because each third down comes with different situations. If it's third and six, Hitting the check down won't matter if he's wide open. If it's, But if it's third and 20 and he hit the check down, then you know, you're looking at a whole different play. But this is third and six, middle of the third quarter. I don't remember the score at the time, but um, we're up. And so what we do is we play our cover two. Our cover two, we gave Cincinnati a lot of problems with it. Uh, it's been kind of effective. You're going to get Roquan dropping out to cover that middle area. Now you see right here, all the intermediate routes are covered. There's there's, every, there's a defender in proximity proximity of everybody, but the first down mark is right here, and Kamara's already there. And this is what scared me the most this game right here, him being this open and us having to rally and tackle him. Like there's nobody even close to him. He's gonna catch it already with the first down. And you know this is one of the one of the three they picked up, and they picked this one up fairly easy. But defending him is what scared the crap out of me. On his next play, it is third and eight uh, from the minus 22 in the first quarter. And what you're going to get is a um, five-man pressure with three deep and three under. Roquan's going to drop out of there even though he looks like he's coming. And you're going to get five guys up front. With four guys up front plus Queen Blitzen. And you're going to get a, a three deep, three under look behind it. And so it's going to look, look looks like a little slant or stunt, I'm sorry, between Calais Campbell and uh, Pat Queen with the three cover three behind it. Those are zones right there. You see Roquan took that middle after he dropped out. You got a flat player here. You got a flat player here. Got deep by Marlowe, deep by Juice Man, and deep by Geno Stone. That's the three deep, three under uh, behind the five-man pressure. But look what's happening in here. Queen went and took out both guys that were originally blocking Justin Houston, which allowed him to loop around and come free to get this sack. This is ultimate team football. And again, Houston said in his press conferences that, you know, he's getting the credit for it, but there's a lot of other people doing stuff to help him. And that was true. Because Queen just sacrificed himself to go to get this sack. Because it looked like a stunt originally with, with Queen and Calais Campbell. But it's really a stunt with Queen and Houston. Queen just going to go in there like a missile and take out everybody else. He's going to take them out. And Houston's allowed to just come off of it. Because two people blocking Houston now. Queen going to go take both of those guys out. The center going to try to come off too. Oh, no, that's Kamara trying to get in there. Kamara just straight whiffed. That was piss poor players blocking. But great team effort, and Houston comes up with a sack. All right, on this play, you got 
third and three from the minus 29. So the yard to gain is, you see the yellow line, it should be the 32-yard line. I need three yards. And this is one of those exotic things that uh, Mike has brought. It's different. There's a lot going on. That's why I kind of drew it up like this. So let's talk about it. The uh, It looks, uh, just pre-snap, it looks like 425 man free. That's what it looks like. Like you, you manned up with your your two outside receivers, your slot receiver, and I think that's a tight end with um with Chuck Clark. And you think you'd get um, you know, the front four rushing. Probably I think that's Queen maybe had the back because Kamara's to his side and um Roquan would kind of sit in the middle as a whole player. But that's not what's going on. Your two interior guys with your two inside linebackers are gonna run games in the middle. So we're only rushing four. Still only rushing four. Now, you do have man-to-man -man coverage with those guys that are linked up. But you got Geno Stone back there sitting free. You got Tybo dropping to a hook curl, and you got Oway dropping to a hook curl. And so that's that's different. That's something Mike's brought in, and let's see how it works. So you're going to get a dragon concept at the bottom. And dragon concept is slant out. The number one receiver is going to run a slant. Number two receiver is going to run an out. And right now, it looks like it can be open because you're thinking, man, you're thinking you can get that, that out route real quick because Chuck said depth. So you think you can throw that route real quick and, and go from there. But even if you're peeking at the slant, Chuck's path to the out takes away the slant. Watch this. You can't throw the slant because Chuck's right there. So all you got left is to throw it out because you've really committed to it. Because look, Norton, he would have to pump fake. And, you know, you don't really want to pump fake as a QB because you never know what's coming on your backside. So at this point, the out's not a, I mean, the slant's not an option because Chuck is taking the slant while he's going to cover the out. Chuck has no responsibility with that slant. That's that's Peters. But the, path, the angle he took to cover the out took away the slant. So now he's just going to throw it out. Chuck made the tackle. So they didn't get a yard on this play. At period, this is they they got to throw for for maybe a yard. It's good defense, good play design, good everything, good execution. Yeah, it's not much to really say about this one. It's third and one, uh, minus thirty four, a minute thirty six seconds left. Um, this is gonna QB sneak it. I ain't you know. And must have really even go over on this one. This is another one they got. So that's two. We've seen two of the three they got. This is the second one. They're just a QB sneak. They got a yard. Let's move on. All right, this next play. It's third and 10 from their, their 15 yard line with 11 seconds left in the second quarter. So it's really, they're trying to get into the end zone. Trying to get a score before the half. We're going to actually drop nine. The only two rushing are Calais Campbell and I think that's Owe at the top up there. Those are the only two guys rushing. Everybody else, watch that banjo up top though. Watch how smooth Pepe and Marley, Marlon hand, hand that off. It's a great banjo. Now, I think the safety was wrong, but maybe he, he broke once the ball was thrown. But let's look at the bottom, look at, at Marlon. Marlowe got three, not Marlowe, Juice Man got three guys inside of him. I think he should stay on outside lives with Alave. Um, and I was wondering, how did Alave get kind of over the top of him and open? So what Juice Man did was, was play trail technique because he know he got help over the top. And so that means Andy Dalton would have to throw the ball over the top. He wouldn't be able to, like, cut this thing off and throw it at the pylon up underneath. He got to throw it over top, which means Chuck got to be over top to help. Now, we got lucky on this one. We definitely got lucky on this one. Because if you look at the top, if they threw that corner up top, after they switched it off, the safety was flat-footed, which is Geno Stone. And if he made a better throw at the bottom, Olave would have had an opportunity to catch the ball. So we got lucky on this one, though. We just got lucky. We lucky, we lucky Andy Dalton's up. But again, now that I think about it, that's not on Andy Dalton. He threw the ball where it needed to be. Watch where that ball land. And it often threw the ball exactly where it needs to be. The receiver got to get to that. When you're in red zone and you run corner routes, your your um aiming point is not the front pylon anymore. It's the back pylon. And it often threw it to the back pylon. 
again, uh, we got lucky on this one. I'll take it, though. I'll take it. Andy Dalton threw the ball exactly where it needs to be. If Dalton, I mean, if, if Olave runs to the back of pylon, he has a better chance of catching it. Not saying he do. But I'll take it. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Now, on this one, this is third and six from the plus 41, five minutes, 11 seconds left in the third quarter. And this is the third one they got. This is the third and final first down they got that'll be on this film. And we're really in a cover two look with Marlowe kind of, you know, as one of the underneath guys instead of one of the outside guys. And he just loses sight of, of Chris Olave for a hot second, which allows them to complete this ball. And you see everybody with your underneath coverage and you got your two deep guys. He just lose sight of Olave just long enough to um, for them to complete this. And Brandon Stevens is occupied trying to jam up. I think that's Callaway or whoever or Kevin White down here at the bottom. And so he doesn't see it either. And I think, and this is not a bad play on Marlowe, but I think if he don't fake that blitz right here, if he don't fake this blitz, he's in better position to, to get his hands on him. He he don't he don't have his hands on him to reroute him or know where he is. And he just loses sight of him for just a second. His eyes are on Dalton, but Olave just finds a soft spot and sits down in it. Which that's a good play by them. So that that's the last first third down they completed or successfully completed or got the rest of the game. And this was um five minutes left in the third quarter. But again, these plays are out of order. Let's go up this next play. It's um, third and four from the plus 10 with a 208 left in the third quarter. Looks like an all out blitz. Everybody by the line of scrimmage. We got uh, what seems to be man to man coverage. Um, you got the two receivers at the bottom, you know, locked up, kind of in press technique, but they're off the ball. You got your receiver up top um, with juice man and press technique. Um, well, something gave this away that this is not a straight up man. Nobody's going that guy. So at that point, I knew something was going on, uh, some kind of exotic pressure or something. But now you see what, what's about to happen. Matabike and Calais Campbell are going to go touch the guard and center respectively, then drop out in different directions. What's going to happen is when they go put their hands on those guys and then bail out of there, they really don't have anybody to block, which creates confusion, which allows Marlowe to come off the edge unscathed. And I'll pause it because when, when, when Calais Campbell and Matter BK bail out, you'll see the guard and center don't block anybody, and you still got Marlowe coming off the edge. So really that created a five versus four because Kamara's going to get in there and help block two off on the top side. I think Kamara's going to block Hamilton, I think, or attempt to block Hamilton. See, they touched him, which means they had to engage in the block. And look at Marlowe. Because right now, Marlowe, if all of them coming, Marlowe's free. And then Hamilton had to be picked up by Kamara. But again, by dropping Matter BK and Calais Campbell out, you kind of take away the hot routes. Like anything hot, like Trey Quan coming through here, you kind of take that away with Campbell dropping. And then you get Kamara on Hamilton. But you still got Marlowe coming unscathed. Because at, when they drop out, look, he don't know who to block. He don't have nobody else to block. And it's tough to create or to, when they drop out to get somebody over there unless you already got it packaged in to think they're coming. And, again, this is what – I hate to go back to this, but this is what the Dolphins did to us last year, stuff like this. They have all those guys up there and bring them from different areas. And if you want to throw a hot, they'll drop people out, you know, so if you may complete the hot, but you may get KO too. So, you know, other people are starting to use what Miami did, well, what Miami introduced – Versus us, and here's one of the instances where we used it, and it worked. And Marlon got a uh, sack on the backside. On right, this play right here, you got third and seven from the minus 34, uh, beginning of the fourth quarter. 14 minutes and four seconds left. You're gonna get a a man free. Concept because Roquan's gonna drop out and kind of be the whole player, but the thing is, everybody's in man, and you see, everybody in the defensive secondary has a guy with the exception of Roquan, don't have a guy, and these safeties. So, who's guarding my man right here? 
I'm not sure. And you'll see when the play starts, uh, Roquan's going to drop out and put his eyes on him. But nobody picks him up, man. Nobody picks him up, man. See, Roquan's looking at him. But then you got, that's locked up, man. That's man. Kyle's locked in on that guy. You got Geno dropping to be a safety, and Chuck's kind of hovering right here. So I think, you know, Chuck would have that, but there's no threat, so he's just hovering and waiting. And you see Queen widening to pick up Kamara. But then again, with that, with that being said, look on the inside. And we'll talk about the coverage in a minute. But you had Ty's Bowles on the outside, and you slid Justin Houston down to like a three technique. So now you got a double on Calais, a solo block with Oway, which means nothing. You got Tybo with this solo block, and you got a solo block on Justin Houston on the guard. And Houston just abused the guard. Yeah, not, right now, Houston's free already. All he got to do is just attack the quarterback. But again, with the coverage, man, 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 he just going to run right past uh, Roquan. Because Roquan's still squared up looking at the QB. So I don't know if he was supposed to be a man or somebody, one of these safeties was supposed to have, have, um, his guy or what? But luckily, Chuck's kind of easing over there because he don't have a responsibility. So maybe maybe Chuck's the middle guy. Or, I'm not sure. But this dude is wide open. Well, not wide open. Running free. And I say he's wide He's running free. See? And you got the safeties there to, to cover him. But everybody else is man. And I just was I was wondering, not saying nobody messed up, who had him because everybody else is locked up. But the, the real key of, to this one is Bowser versus the guard. He's passed the guard already. He just got to finish the play. Just got to finish the play. And he did. I think this is the one that gave him a half a sack on him and Calais. And again, with Calais getting in on the sack, he was doubled initially. But the center looked back to help the guard for some strange reason. And then Calais just looped around right here to the sack. Bowser going to push him a little bit that way. And he's going to push him right into Calais. And they teamed up on the sack. Not a lot to say about this one. It's third and 14, uh, minus 13 with 5.56 left. And this is screenplay. And we get hurt on screens a lot. But this was um was a little different. And, and yeah, they get yardage on They get yardage on this one. They don't get a first down. But watch um Roquan's effort. We bring in five. But watch Roquan's effort. And I'm going to highlight him right there. Watch his effort as soon as he realizes his screen. Oh, he realizes it now and is trying to get out there. Look who makes the tackle. Or is in on the tackle. That's the type of effort we need to so people won't just hit us on screens like they do. And we get, you know, and even though this this one gets 12 yards, but they don't get the first down, which is key. Because the first down yard line is to 27. They don't get they don't get there. But the effort and recognition by Roquan is what stood out to me on this play. Almost as soon as he goes through the line and he realizes they're not blocking, he turns. He even beats uh, Owe, who was Further outside to him. So look at that effort between him and Owe. Always supposed to be a four three guy. And I and I know he's not a four three guy now because he's I'm I'm convinced he's too bulky. But just look at the effort by Roquan. And him and him and Owe are right beside each other now. It's all about effort. It's all about the effort. And we, we do get the stop. We do get the stop. I'm just being kind of nitpicky right now. We do get the the stop. Kyle Hamilton's flying in there. Uh, Peter's holding his ground. Roquan's hustling. That's what we need, guys. Fly, and and we flew around to the ball with a different swagger. And I don't know if I don't know if it's cause Roquan in there, but the defense flew around a lot Monday. Could be cause of the Saints, but I think Roquan has some effect on it. Now, this is the last play. Um, you get simulated pressure on this. It's third and six from the minus forty-four. And this is early in the game, first quarter. You get a simulated pressure. It's going to look like we're bringing, um, what's that, one, two, five? But we're actually not. You're going to have a, you're gonna bring four and you're going to drop seven. You're going to have cover three behind it. Those are the alleys that they got. Kyle dropped down to play the flats. I don't know who that safety is. I think that's Chuck going to play the other flats. And you got Juice Man and Humphreys with your deep thirds. You got Geno Stone in the middle. And you got Roquan dropping out. Right over the floor of the leaf, and you got Queen going to widen out and play that hook curl, that other hook curl. But it looks like we're bringing five because you got all those guys at the line of scrimmage. You got those five. We only bring in four. Getting pressure with four is something 
we weren't able to do in the past, and we're starting to get better at that now. Those are the four guys that are going to come. And we got three to the offensive right, which is going to create a, a confusion. They don't slide it right. Tybo is able to come off free, and he got to throw it away. And we play his zone behind it, so all eyes are on zone. So he get, really don't have an option to kind of throw it up and try to make a play because all the eyes are on him because it's zone behind it. Does a good job of simulating one pressure and then just getting home with four, creating confusion with the offensive line. Because what they should do is kind of, you know, go big on big. In my opinion, well, big on big is, you know, the fighters up front, each guy take a man. That's what I think they should do, but they don't. They kind of, you know, use conventional rules and forget about that edge guy. Because really, they slide right. I think the guard messes up. Because the center goes this way to Calais. He should go there, and the tackle should go there. But with this guard stand here, the rules are you take the innermost guy and make make the, the furthest guy run the loop, which which is what this tackle does. He takes that guy because the guard not taking him and makes him come around. So it's really the guard's fault. The guard stays there and doesn't slide to the right. And we take advantage of it. Still, even though they messed up, it created confusion. And we'll take it. Any day of the week, five times on Monday. And again, we held them to only three first down, well, three third down conversions this game. Um, three of 11, which is, again, under 30%. I don't know the exact number, maybe like 27, 26, somewhere up in there. But um, if we keep playing like this on third downs, you should win the majority of your games. Uh, great efficiency on offense, great efficiency on defense. And the guys just balled out, man. It look, defensively, it looks like it's starting to jail because they really didn't muster much offense other than that, that fluke touchdown at the end when they thought they stepped out and he didn't. They, had, they got some yards and they got some field goals, but they wouldn't have scored at all, in my opinion, had, had they not got their fluke touchdown. Well, not scored a touchdown had they not got the fluke touchdown. But, again, if this is your first time here, please hit the like button. You like the content. Um, subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified. And if you want more just not necessarily Ravens content, but football in general content, I suggest you go follow my second channel, which is more Sip to Tally. That channel is for the other 31 teams, and I've put out what I think is some good content on some players from other teams. And from a biased standpoint, from a, not a T, ain't no T in bias, from a biased mm -hmm. standpoint. So um, go follow that channel uh, if you want some more good football content. And it's just straight good football talk, not necessarily with an agenda attached to it. Um, hey, like, comment, subscribe, man. Put your comments in the comment section. Tell me what you agree with, what you disagree with. Uh, if you like the content, what you might want to see. And uh, we'll go from there, man. I appreciate all the new members I got. I appreciate everybody that came through in the Super Chat Monday. Well, not Monday, Tuesday for the um, roundtable. And, uh, again, no roundtable this Monday because we don't have a game. So I'll be hitting you with videos throughout the week. And the roundtable will be back after the Panthers game. Um, see y'all soon, man. Peace. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And I'm out.